know I have Hogwarts to play, but I've been enjoying the shit out of this, so... Shall we continue? Turn of the bomber. All right. <clears throat> Crazy. There's just like places where I'm like, where, where was this? Does this just go around the corner to the? Yeah. Okay. So we already came through here. I want to go open that stupid door. <laughs> so we're gonna make a circle. Yeah, this door. Because <laughs> he's like, he refuses to know that there's nothing behind there. Do you get an achievement or something? Ah! Nothing. <laughs> like, I kind of figured, like, nothing would happen, but still. <clears throat> Whatever, man. <laughs> Is it the FOV or something? Why it's consistently doing that? I don't understand. Alright. So yeah, now we got some ammo, so...
I don't want to waste bullets. Oh fuck! Oh fuck! He's gonna start shooting at me. Oh god! <laughs> get the ammo like fuck uh. oops <laughs> come on you fucker Got all of them. Fucking A. I guess I should talk about Terminator, <laughs> considering we're playing Terminator. And I have a little bit in our other videos, but... Yeah... So I think the most I remember <clears throat> is Terminator 2, because, like... I'm pretty sure I saw that one first. Uh, I don't know, I must have been like 8 years old, maybe even younger than that, when I first saw Terminator. But I fell in love with it, in like, instantly, when I first saw it. My dad, because back in the day when movies were on VHS, uh, <clears throat> my dad made or recorded it from TV, so he had like a copy of it. And I remember it specifically because it was in like a white case and it said Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Because that's how you would do movies back then. Either that or he was. He either recorded it from TV or he was probably smart about it. No, I'm pretty sure he was smart about it and did like a double record. So like he, somebody else had the movie, he borrowed it, recorded it, and then, yeah. My dad always did stuff like that. He just made copies of movies or games and things like that back then because you could do it. It's easy. Let's see. And I, um, I 
of course, like, instantly fell in love with John Connor because, like, how can you not like John Connor? John Connor is fucking awesome. So, you know, just like every other kid, of course, kids that were more teenagers at that time probably had a better relationship because I was pretty young, but... <clears throat> He's a pretty big influence on my style and things like that. You know, the rebellious teen bullshit, but... Yeah, I, uh, I absolutely fell in love with Terminator, and then... I did that with a lot of movies, like Young Guns, for example. I saw the second Young Guns before I saw the first Young Guns, but that's neither here nor there. But later on, once I watched the first Terminator... It wasn't until I got a little bit older, like probably in my teen years, where I really appreciated the first Terminator. So the first two Terminators are the best, like, period. You, you can't get better than the first two. But, um, the first one, once I, uh, learned a little bit more about Kyle Reese, like, Kyle, Kyle became my favorite, because he just was a great character and Michael Bean in general he's an awesome actor I mean and working him working with James Cameron and other movies like Aliens and shit like that like he's just a good character that's already just two iconic characters in itself you have Terminator where he's Kyle Reese and then Aliens where he's Corporal Hicks that's also another story for another time Something else I probably watched the second one of, too, was Aliens before I watched Alien. I'm noticing I, uh, I like a lot of sci-fi movies. <laughs> but... I have my dad to thank for all of that stuff because he showed me all all of these things. This is the reason why I like a lot of these games or I like a lot of these movies. And not to get all sentimental, but unfortunately my dad did pass away some years ago now. But again, super grateful that he showed me all this stuff. But back to Terminator. So after I watched the first one, and then, you know, we waited a few years, and then the 2000s. So we watched Terminator 3. That one I remember specifically we saw in theaters, and Terminator 3 was... At the time, I liked it, but it's like that. That one's just. Eh. I have a soft spot for it. Mostly, the ending is what I enjoyed the most about it, because I like the concept of they were able to change the time that Judgment Day happened. Like they were only able to postpone it. Like it was going to happen regardless, and that's kind of how I figured things would be. Like they can't stop Judgment Day. Somebody's gonna create some stupid AI and blah blah blah. Uh, yeah, I figured that would explode. But uh, the ending, it was just, it's just really cool. Um, not so much like the last battle between the T800 and the TX, like. And the TX, that's like a whole conversation in itself. Alright, let's blow this up real quick. Oh, goody. one down but uh no just the ending like with the nukes going off and you know him basically saying is there a it's never the mission to stop judgment day or something like that it was merely to survive it
and you just got all the nukes that go off, and it was cool. It was like, all right, I was fine with that being a sequel to 2 because it made sense. Like, it was basically canon. And then Terminator 4 came out, and... Terminator Salvation, like they have the trailer for that, and you know, of course I'm a teenager by that time, so I'm like, yes, yeah, it's gonna be awesome. And though a lot of people don't like that movie, I thoroughly enjoyed that film. It's good. But it made sense to me because it it even though it is technically a different timeline, it made sense to me because it could have been a follow-up to Terminator 3, and then they could have just kept going with it until it made the full cycle, and then they sent Kyle back in time, and blah, blah, blah. And yeah, it was, it was awesome. But that ended up, that movie ended up failing, unfortunately, so they never made the rest of those films. And then... During that same period, though, there was a Sarah Connor Chronicles, which was on TV. And I remember that specifically because me and my brother used to watch it like every Monday at my uncle's because we're Terminator fans. Like, me and my brother could have a conversation about Terminator for days, years. We did have a conversation about Terminator for basically a week straight. We were watching Terminator basically every day, and we just kept talking about it, alternate timelines, and blah, 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 etc., etc. <clears throat> um, and it's kind of hard to choose for me to choose because of all these alternate timelines, and though there are some things in Terminator, uh, Sir Con Chronicles that I'm like, yes. they're kind of cringy. Altogether, it is a great show. Like, it, what they were trying to do with it was good. It was just uh, there were parts that didn't turn out so good because of the writer's strike situation that was happening during that time. So that's why the story and there's specific elements that feel weird. Like the easiest way I can describe it is in the uh, the first season, in the first couple of episodes. This is during this period of the writer's strike in like 2008 or something like that. I don't remember. But the first couple of episodes during that time, Cameron, so the, um, the Terminator, the chick, she acted a certain way. She acted more human because that's how it was written. But as the episodes went on, she got more robotic and mechanical and her dialogue was more like that. And it, it just kind of sucked because that was the whole, one of the reasons it felt so good is because she was an infiltrator. She felt more human. It made it almost that much more scary in a sense. And believable. And then after, um, what's it called? After Terminator 4 came out, we, you know, had a hiatus for a while from Terminator because it didn't do well in the box office, and blah, blah. And then finally they're like, all right, we're bringing another Terminator. And it's like, okay, well, what are we going to do now? Because I'm expecting a sequel to Salvation, but being a kid at the time, I didn't understand box office concepts and things like that, and that we weren't getting a sequel to Salvation. So now we have another movie that's a reboot on the way, and like that, just like the pictures from it, I was like, oh, God. The concept was pretty cool, but the... Uh, just some of the actors, like Amelia Clark, she did not do justice for Sarah Connor. Like, yeah. No. I know some people are like, oh, Game of Thrones, Game of Thrones, that's cool and all, but stick to Game of Thrones. Do what you're good at. You can't play Sarah Connor. And the guy that they got to play John, um, I didn't mind him in Planet of the Apes, but, uh,. <laughs> Stick to anything else. You don't belong in the Terminator universe. Well, 
think there's any more Terminators. We just got to get to that vantage point. But yeah, so it just it just sucked, and then it was like they had Doctor Who or whatever play Skynet, and I'm like, okay, now Skynet's like taking over a body, and like it's just <sighs> the concept was there. There was just too many questions that didn't get answered. Like it, it could have been fine as a reboot, but it didn't work because they <sighs> they basically just deleted the timeline. Is what they were trying to do. And it sucked. It's like there's a T-1000 in there that has like no business. But yeah, there's just things in there that don't make any sense. Like the, uh, like I was saying, the T-1000, it's like they don't explain any backstory. Like you have, so like Arnold's Terminator, you have no idea who sent him in Terminator Genesis. There's a T-1000 that's briefly in there in the beginning. You have no idea who sent him. It's like, it, it just, there were too many things that were unanswered. And then you get to the very end of it, and you're like, okay, so, of course you're not thinking it's over, because it's fucking Terminator. And then they have, like, the little Easter egg at the end, or the, not the Easter egg, but, like, the, the part at the very end, and it's like, Skynet's not dead, there's a backup thing, and blah blah blah, and it's just so, like, <sighs> didn't work. So, alright, then you have, uh, then you had Terminator Dark Faith, and this is where we all got really excited, because the reason why <clears throat> everything after Terminator 2 at least in our minds, the reason why it, me and my brother kind of sucked is because James Cameron didn't make those movies. He sold the rights, and then he finally got the rights back, and then the uh, Tim Miller, yeah, Tim Miller, he was like, I'm going to make a Terminator movie, and me and James Cameron are working together, so we're like, fuck yeah, this is going to be awesome, and then... You know, you get Linda Hamilton, and you have Arnold Schwarzenegger, so you're super excited for it. Like, cool, we have some of the original cast. Like, this is going to be awesome. And it just, it just wasn't. Like, just, they went the route that I sort of thought they were going to go anyways. Like, all right, alternative future, a different AI takes over. Fine, that's all, you know, whatever. But there's so many things in that movie that don't make any sense at all like they're two completely different timelines it, it's like hard to wrap my head around it but there's two completely different timelines how do i get up here uh reach a good vantage point okay that's what i've been trying to do there's two completely separate timelines that happen so you have the original timeline that gets deleted basically and is also oh the, another set of stairs that gets deleted because they stopped judgment day technically in terminator 2 but where it pissed me off is it was like a concept we thought about the whole time they ended up doing just to get rid of john connor was we're gonna send multiple terminators from skynet and one of them finally caught up and killed john connor and it was like okay this is fucking bullshit so <laughs> then because that happened it's like one of them um so Arnold, Schwarz Arnold Schwarzenegger like the T-800 that killed John finally after he accomplishes his mission like lives out the rest of his time so because of that and they stop Judgment Day in Terminator 2 there's just like this limbo area of this Terminator so that all that's all said and fine but where it gets confusing is that this new timeline with this chick, Grace, she has, like, coordinates to that Terminator that killed John, and it's, like, really confusing, and it's, like, who sent you the coordinates or wrote the coordinates on there, and it's just, yeah, it's, like, super frustrating, and I guess it was the new leader of the Resistance, and look, I'm all for, like, new characters and things like that, but... Ultimately, it just ended up trying to be like a, a badass, like, we're women and we're badass. And that's fine. That's fine. But it just was like, 
a shitty movie, man. You have this... <laughs> you have this cyborg that's like... She's augmented. So she's half human and half augmented. So she just has enhancements. She's not really a Terminator. Or even a cyborg for that matter. I don't know. But the thing is, is that it's like... She's able to take on Terminators in short bursts. And um, basically after she takes a Terminator, then her metabolism breaks down and she starts going into like a diabetic seizure. <laughs> and I'm like, you mean to tell me that the hero you send back is a diabetic like I'm a diabetic that is the stupidest thing you could do what a guardian to send back that's the last one good job with these pictures rivers we're one step closer to preparing a counterattack. I'm starting to see why Skynet isn't so fond of you now get your ass back to the shelter all right now we got that all done awesome Okay, so then, <clears throat> like, I don't want to go into the whole plot of each movie because that can take way too much time and could literally be like a six hour video, which is why I briefly talked about each one. But now, we're pretty much in limbo with Terminator again. So supposedly there's an animated Netflix series that's on the way, and then James Cameron is again thinking about doing another Terminator movie, but we don't know if that's going to be in effect and blah 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 because of Avatar 2 and 3 and yada 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 and it's just, yeah. It... I just hate that something so great became a money grabber <clears throat> and it just turned into a mess. There are three movies that failed to become a trilogy because if they make another one, they're not going to add on to Dark Fate they're not going to add on to Genesis and they're not going to add on to Salvation. So now you would have a fourth reboot again or however James wants to do it and it's just like fuck man what was so hard about making six movies? You have the first three and then it's like the, the last three are in the future basically going full circle. So, you know, have battles in the future, blah, 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 and then finally you just get up to the point where it just comes full circle. You send Kyle back in time, and that's it. It could have just been fine and done a long time ago. It's like, what? Yeah, thinking about it now, because you have Salvation. Yeah, like six movies later, it's just like, Jesus, man. like if you want a good Terminator movie or something either play this game play Dawn of Fate watch Terminator the Sarah Connor Chronicles or read the books that take place after Terminator 2 because even those are make way more sense because there's so many other Terminators that they don't end up showing and it, it sucks because the Terminators in the books were awesome and even in the uh the battle across time. It's like you never get to see the uh, the T1 million in other movies, which is a gigantic liquid metal spider. <laughs> but it's awesome. Jacob, how is Pasadena? Uh, you know what? Forget I asked. I don't want to know. I'm just glad that you're all right. And how are you doing? I guess I'm a little nervous before tomorrow. Uh -huh. Why are, why are all these characters' voices so loud, but then when the main character talks, it's like, Hi, how are you doing? And then the main character is like, I'm okay. <laughs> Aren't you curious about what happened in Pasadena? No. I think I'd rather keep that place in the past. Actually, I have a confession to make. I've never been outside of Pasadena until now. Can you believe that? That's not surprising. After all, that's where your home is. Where it used to be. 
Right now, I'm going to try someplace new to call home. I did my traveling through pictures and postcards that wanderers brought with them. My favorite had a little flamingo drinking water from a lake on it. Its long red neck curved like a snake. Patrick's mother gave me that postcard. Hmm. It's funny how I never met my mother, but I was around to see Patrick's leave him. I thought Patrick was your brother. In our house, we were all brothers and sisters. But me and Patrick, we've always had this special bond. Felt what the other one was feeling. <laughs> We'd even get sick together. I remember the day Patrick's mom brought him in. They were both tired and dirty, so we took care of them. Patrick was crying a lot. He was teething at the time. I think that was what scared her away. She just couldn't handle the crying. How was she? I loved her. For the time she was with us, I liked to pretend she was my mother, too. After she took off, I was devastated. But my father said, you need to grow up. You have a brother now. So I burned the postcard. The little red flamingo flew up in flames. And I promised myself I'd never be weak again. But I guess we all need someone we can be weak with sometimes, don't we? I never asked you. What are you planning to do tomorrow? I've been meaning to tell you earlier, but I panicked. And that's because I decided to go with Ryan. We'll find somewhere safe, away from all this. You have to understand, I need to do what's best for Patrick. I'm his big sis. I need to protect him. I... I haven't told him yet. He'll be devastated leaving you and Aaron, but I think it's for the best. Fair enough. It's like fighting with the resistance is almost guaranteed death, so... Wake up! We need to move. What? What's going on? Everyone, wake up! You need to get out of here. Who the fuck are you? It doesn't matter. What matters is that you can't stay here any longer. She asks a question, and I suggest answering. You don't want to do that. I've got this place rigged with explosives, and there's a detonator in my pocket. You got what? Do you mind? Lower your gun, Ryan. He's the one that saved my life. What do you want from us? You have to get out of here. Skynet's on its way. They finally found you. What you mean, they found us? They were looking for us? Not for you. For him. He's essential to winning this war. Skynet knows that. That's why they've been following him for months. I have to make sure nothing happens to him. In a couple of minutes, an infiltrator will walk in here trying to kill him. I can't let that happen. We have to bury that Terminator here once and for all. All right, everybody, you heard him. Let's get moving. I'll get the bus ready. There's no time for that. There's a passage here. It will lead you out. Use it. <gasps> what was that? All right, everyone, get out. It's about to get real. Jacob! Give me it. It's the same one. It's the same model. Leave! Now! How the hell is he still alive? Go! 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 Watch out! Don't just stand there! Run! It's like you would think with all the shit that they went through, <laughs> they would all know by now. It's like there are Terminators that look human. <sighs> Baron 
didn't listen to us. She could no longer deny that this infiltrator was a real threat. She decided to take everyone in, on her terms. The shelter was on high alert, but thanks to the intel I gathered in Pasadena, we slowed the advance of the Annihilation Line and gained some time. Just enough to start preparing the counterattack. Sergeant, at ease. Well, look at you, Sergeant. When you helped us in Pasadena the other day, I was trying really hard not to panic because you were only a private. Sorry for underestimating you. I guess I should salute or something? How's Patrick? Every day a little better. Aaron says he'll be you back on his feet in no time. She's done a great job with him. I wish I could repay her somehow. It just doesn't seem that she needs anything. Getting ready for another scavenging run? No, I just came out here to catch my breath. Baron is giving us the entire evening off, believe it or not. Doesn't sound like her. I need to report to Baron. Rivers, DN 46890. The commander is expecting you in the control room, Sergeant. Marachino cherries again. Where do they keep finding this shit? I don't get it. How did they bring that buggy down? I'm going out soon. I haven't made my daily quota yet. I still have three more rats to catch. If you see one, let me know, okay? Do you need anything? Not right now. Hey, Ryan. How's everything? Exactly as you would imagine. Barons keep me busy. They weren't kidding when they said she's a hard ass. What happened after you started your camp? Honestly, well, not that much. At least not in the beginning. When we gave up on the idea of getting in touch with anyone, we just tried to adapt. The temperatures fell, we had to scavenge for food. All of a sudden, that became our life. Didn't you try to reach home? Some people did. Most of us were scared of what we'd find if we did get home. So we conveniently said we are stranded here anyways and stayed. Well, I know how stupid it sounds, but we managed to have fun in our little commune. I still had my guitar with me. We talked a lot about how we're going to be famous because we're the only living band in the world. What was your band's name? 
Well, we were thinking about changing it to survivors, but something similar was already taken. We were just stupid kids, not realizing what was going on. We paid the price for it the first time we saw a tin can. I was tuning my guitar when I heard a strange noise. I found out later that it was a T-400. Must have heard me play. It didn't even have the decency to look scary. Maybe if it did, we wouldn't have just stood there when it started firing. What did you do? I froze. I didn't run to help. I didn't scream. I didn't even move. I just stood there, like a coward. A tin can got Tucker with a single bullet. Bam! Just like that. Seven other people died before we finally just like destroyed that. that Pow, right in the kisser. Ironically enough, I was the one who delivered the final blow. Safe to say, it was the beginning of a new era. What did you hear? A lot of rumors going around of how she's sending insubordinate workers to the front line. And by insubordinate, I mean people who ain't willing to work 18 hours a day. Every day. All right? Me? Honey, I'm about the most well-adjusted person in this goddamn place. It's the others you should be concerned about. How's Patrick doing? He's fine, but it wouldn't kill you if you checked on him yourself. Jennifer? I'm worried about her. I'm the one that asked Baron to give her team a little break. Jennifer's been busy scavenging supplies for the soldiers, and she hardly had time to see Patrick. And now she's finally got a day off. She's avoiding him like the plague. You mean Ryan? Ryan ain't so hot either, but that's another story. Is there anything you need? No. I have to say the resistance is pretty well supplied. Don't tell me you miss running errands for me. I don't believe that for a second. And what about something other than medicine? Honey... I'm not shy. I'll let you know if I need anything, okay? But thank you for asking. Take care. How are you doing? Good. Erin's going to let me leave in a couple of days. Thanks for bringing that chalk. I've been drawing a lot. I'd be so bored without it. How do you like living in the shelter? There's a lot of people here. I like that. I heard a funny joke yesterday. You want to hear it? Yeah, tell me. What's brown and sticky? A stick! <laughs> That's funny. I know, right? How's Jennifer? She's out a lot, but I understand. She's a scavenger. I have to go. <laughs> She's a scavenger, I gotta go. Alvin lost his spider scout again. Man, I saw it crawling through the shelter earlier. Almost gave me a heart attack. You wanted to see me. You're finally here. Good. I have a special task for you. I want you to head downtown to check on the doctor. Doctor? Alvin. He's out there making sure that our defense systems are working properly. Ever since we went radio silent, 
I had a small team of trustworthy messengers maintaining communication between our outposts. They haven't returned. So I want you to go downtown and see why that happened. Could be nothing. But Connor doesn't want any hiccups while he's up there in North Division preparing the attack on Skynet's central core. If you don't mind me asking, how did you end up here? Excuse me if I act a little surprised, Sergeant. But no one in here thinks it's wise to ask their superior personal questions. But since you did, I'll humor you. So, how did I get here? The same way you did. I was born, raised, and given a gun. We don't really have a say in what we do, do we? Or do I assume too much? Was it any different for you? Hmm? Why do you fight, Sergeant? It's the right thing to do. There's nothing noble in what we do. Humans were fighting humans since the beginning of time. It just so happens that right now we have a common enemy. If it wasn't for the machines, we'd probably be fighting each other. That doesn't mean we should give up and stop fighting. No. No, it doesn't. I'm just warning you. Don't hold your breath waiting for all of this to be over. There will always be another war. Besides, I'm not a fighter. When I go out there in the middle of the night with my Westinghouse, I'm not looking for a fight. I look to seek and conquer. I'm not a fighter. I'm a bully. <laughs> What's the difference? I don't treat them as equals. And although I know they're just machines, I want them to fear me. No one ever stands up to bullies. But I have to admit, it has its downsides. One of them being that no one ever asks me a personal question. At least not since Perry died. So congratulations, Rivers. It takes guts to stand up to a bully. I guess since your promotion, you got a little more cocky. Good for you. Is there a problem with the radio? The Annihilation Line is within spitting distance of downtown. We suspect that Skynet will be intercepting all transmissions from that location. So for now, we're going radio silent. That's why I need you to go there personally. Central Core? Skynet's main reactor. The source of all their power. We shut down the Central Core, we shut down Skynet. Connor's preparing the attack as we speak. So you understand we can't have any critical complications at this stage. Over here! I'm telling you, I saw something. Well, <clears throat> looks like we're at the next battle. So for now, I'll save it here and then we'll keep on fighting. So until next time, more Terminator.